Joe Emanuel Hagland, also known as Joe Hill, was born 1879 in Gavl, a city in the province of Gastrikland, Sweden. He was the third child in a family of nine, where three children died young. His father, Olaf, worked as a conductor on the Gefeldala railway line. Olaf, his father, died at the age of 41, and his death meant economic disaster for the family. Joe's mother Margareta Katharina did, however, succeed in keeping the family together until she died when Joel was in his early 20s. In his late teens early 20s, Joel fell seriously ill with skin and glandular tuberculosis, and underwent extensive treatment in Stockholm. In October 1902, when nearly 23, Joel and his brother Paul Elias Hagland immigrated to the United States. Hill became an itinerant laborer, moving from New York City to Cleveland, and eventually to the West Coast. He was in San Francisco at the time of the 1906 earthquake. By this time using the name Joe or Joseph Hillstrom, he joined the Industrial Workers of the World or Wobblies around 1910, when working on the docks in San Pedro, California. In late 1910 he wrote a letter to the Iowa newspaper Industrial Worker, identifying himself as a member of the IWW local chapter in Portland, Oregon. He rose in the IWW organization and traveled widely, organizing workers under the IWW banner, writing political songs and satirical poems, and making speeches. He shortened his pseudonym to Joe Hill as the pen name under which his songs, cartoons and other writings appeared. His songs frequently appropriated familiar melodies from popular songs and hymns of the time. He coined the phrase Pie in the Sky, which appeared in his song The Preacher and the Slave. Other notable songs written by Hill include The Tramp, There is Power in a Union, the Rebel Girl, and Casey Jones, the Union Scab. As an itinerant worker, Hill moved around the West, hopping freight trains, going from job to job. By the end of 1913, he was working as a laborer at the Silver King Mine in Park City, Utah, not far from Salt Lake City. On January 10, 1914, John G. Morrison and his son Arling were killed in their Salt Lake City grocery store by two armed intruders masked in red bandanas. The police first thought it was a crime of revenge, for nothing had been stolen and the elder Morrison had been a police officer, possibly creating many enemies. On the same evening, Joe Hill appeared on the doorstep of a local doctor with a bullet wound through the left lung. Hill said that he had been shot in an argument over a woman, whom he refused to name. The doctor reported that Hill was armed with a pistol. Considering Morrison's past as a police officer, several men he had arrested were at first considered suspects. Twelve people were arrested in the case before Hill was arrested and charged with the murder. A red bandana was found in Hill's room. The pistol purported to be in Hill's possession at the doctor's office was not found. Hill resolutely denied that he was involved in the robbery and killing of Morrison. He said that when he was shot, his hands were over his head, and the bullet hole in his coat, four inches below the exit wound in his back, seemed to support this claim. Hill did not testify at his trial, but his lawyers pointed out that four other people were treated for bullet wounds in Salt Lake City that same night, and that the lack of robbery and Hill's unfamiliarity with Morrison left him with no motive. The prosecution, for its part, 
produced a dozen eyewitnesses who said that the killer resembled Hill, including 13-year-old Merlin Morrison, the victim's son, and a brother, who upon first seeing Hill said, that's not him at all, but later identified him as the murderer. The jury took just a few hours to find him guilty of murder. An appeal to the Utah Supreme Court was unsuccessful. Oren N. Hilton, the lawyer representing Hill during the appeal, declared, the main thing the state had on Hill was that he was a wobbly and therefore sure to be guilty. Hill tried to keep the eye wowed out, but the press fastened it upon him. In a letter to the court, Hill continued to deny that the state had a right to inquire into the origins of his wound, leaving little doubt that the judges would affirm the conviction. Chief Justice Daniel Strop wrote that his unexplained wound was a distinguishing mark, and that the defendant may not avoid the natural and reasonable inferences of remaining silent. In an article for the socialist newspaper Appeal to Reason, Hill wrote, Owing to the prominence of Mr. Morrison, there had to be a goat and the undersigned being, as they thought, a friendless tramp, a Swede, and worst of all, an IWW, had no right to live anyway, and was therefore duly selected to be the goat. The case turned into a major media event. President Woodrow Wilson, Helen Keller, the Swedish ambassador and the Swedish public all became involved in a bid for clemency. It generated international union attention, and critics charged that the trial and conviction were unfair. More recently, Utah Phillips considered Joe Hill to have been a political prisoner who was executed for his political agitation through songwriting. In a biography published in 2011, William M. Adler concludes that Hill was probably innocent of murder, but also suggests that Hill came to see himself as worth more to the labor movement as a dead martyr than he was alive, and that this understanding may have influenced his decisions not to testify at the trial and subsequently to spurn all chances of a pardon. Adler reports that evidence pointed to early police suspect Frank Z. Wilson, and cites Hilda Erickson's letter, which states that Hill had told her he had been shot by her former fiancé. Joe Hill was executed by firing squad on November 19, 1915 at Utah's Sugar House Prison. When Deputy Shetler, who led the firing squad, called out the sequence of commands preparatory to firing Hill shouted, Fire! Go on and fire! That same day, a dynamite bomb was discovered at the Tarrytown estate of John D. Archbold, president of the Standard Oil Company. Police theorized the bomb was planted by anarchists and Iowa radicals as a protest against Hill's execution. The bomb was discovered by a gardener, who found four sticks of dynamite, weighing a pound each, half hidden in a rut in a driveway 50 feet from the front entrance of the residence. The dynamite sticks were bound together by a length of wire, fitted with percussion caps, and wrapped with a piece of paper matching the color of the driveway a path used by Archbold in going to or from his home by automobile. The bomb was later defused by police. Just prior to his execution, Hill had written to Bill Haywood, an Iowa leader, saying, Goodbye Bill. I die like a true blue rebel. Don't waste any time in mourning. Could you arrange to have my body hauled to the state line to be buried? I don't want to be found dead in Utah. Hunter S. Thompson asserted that Joe's last words were don't mourn. Hill's body was sent to Chicago, where it was cremated. In accordance with his wishes, his ashes were placed into 600 small envelopes and sent around the world to be released to the winds. 
Delegates attending the 10th convention of the Iowa and Chicago received envelopes November 19, 1916, one year to the day of Hill's execution. The rest of the 600 envelopes were sent to Iowa locals, wobblies and sympathizers around the world on January 3, 1917. Thank you for watching Death. Today's video is sponsored by nobility.co.uk the leading company in selling legal titles in the United Kingdom get a 10% discount in any purchase by mentioning death row here in the UK there are two types of titles firstly there are peerages which are granted by the Queen these are not allowed to be sold. Secondly, there are manorial feudal titles. Uh, these were once based on land ownership. Uh, however, since 1925, titles have been separate from the land itself with the introduction of the Law of Property Act 1925. Here is the UK government website showing what titles are legal. Manorial feudal titles are regarded as inheritable property which any nationality worldwide can purchase. Companies selling seated titles or titles with tiny plots of land whilst sounding good are in fact by law novelty souvenirs, not real genuine titles. Legally approved by UK trading standards, barristers and a UK law lord, no other company has a law lord ruling, 100% legal and proper. You can add your title to passports, bank cards, etc. Even American and Canadian citizens can add the title to their passports on the observation page. All UK and foreign titles have passed 12 legal security checks before offering them for sale. Buy with confidence from the number one title broker in the world, established 1996. Compliant with Privacy Data Protection Act 2018 the Honours Prevention and Abuses Act and Law of Property Act 1925. All processed through UK solicitors. Strictly private and confidential.